right, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're talking about the power of prepping, the wisdom of being prepared for life. We're talking about the story of Bear Grylls. Bear Grylls, a survival hero who survived 40 minutes in the desert. That's right, that morning he woke up in his hotel room. He went down to the production meeting with all the rest of the crew. Did he have a full crew breakfast? He had a continental breakfast, just a continental breakfast of waffles, toast, bacon, eggs, coffee. Someone give me an amen. He was starving with this scant breakfast. The production crew had warm coats on. It was very cold that morning. But did Bear Grylls have a production coat? No, yeah, it's his costume. He was suffering in his costume. He had hand warmers in his pockets and his boots and all up and down his back. But other than that, he was suffering, surviving in the wilderness. <laughs> Someone give me an amen. Hold on, hold on. I'm feeling the power of prepping. It's telling me somewhere in the audience there's an unbeliever, somebody who doesn't believe in the wisdom of prepping. But don't worry, don't worry. Someone give me an amen. Someone give me an amen. Give me an hallelujah. That's right, that's right. We're gonna turn them into a believer in prep. Okay, this was not at all my best performance ever. Um, I wanted to try it out. Uh, give it a B. Would you give it a B? Got an important topic today that we're gonna talk about after the open. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and in this video I want to talk about something that's very, very important to so many preppers, and that is the idea of sharing prepping ideas with non-preppers, uh, specifically family members, people that we care about, uh, without coming off sounding like a crazy nut, of course, <laughs> because, I mean, you can say whatever you want, but, uh, you know, if you just sound like you're a lunatic, it's not going to be a very effective communication. Uh, and this is really important to so many preppers because, you know, we're human beings, we care and love people, and uh, it is... Uh, it's something that's really on a lot of our minds. I know there are preppers who have uh, set aside specific preps just to be given away. They make care packages just to give away to people because it's so important to them. Uh, and it's a lot of effort on our part <laughs> to do that, you know, non-preppers, you know. Uh, and, uh, and also, you know, no matter how much effort we want to put in, just with the way people's families are and friend networks are now so spread out geographically, you know, even with all the best intentions in the world, in a, in a crisis, we can't necessarily even get to people to help them, uh, or at least not, you know, you know, all the people that we would care about. So it's really important to be able to help people to help themselves in this way. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, what my approach is to that, because I've had some mild success with getting non-preppers uh, to, at the very least, start thinking about these, these things a little bit. And, uh, and, I, and I think that that's kind of, that's the beginning of the road, is to think about it, start making a few uh, simple provisions and go from there. Uh, and my approach to it is to start small. You know, it, it, in, the, in the whole prepper sphere, if that's a word, I, I know I make up words occasionally, in the prepper sphere, the, the exciting things oftentimes grab the, the headlines, you know, the clickbait kind of titles. You know, I have some experience with that. I made one clickbait title once, one really good clickbait title once, about clickbait titles. And uh, yeah, a lot of people clicked on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're very disappointed that I was just chastising them for clicking on clickbait titles once they watched the video. But um, uh, in our world of all, all this clickbait and everything, you know, the exciting stuff is the stuff that gets most of the attention. You know, major financial collapse, meteors coming in, Yellowstone's going to explode, aliens are airdropping bird flu infected clown zombies, which is so hard to say. It's something that is almost certainly going to happen, but it just, it's developed. It used to just be aliens airdropping zombies. And then someone said they should be bird flu infected zombies. And then someone said they should be clown zombies. And now it's such a mouthful. This is the fourth take of me doing this just because I, I have so much trouble saying aliens airdropping bird flu infected clown zombies. I'm sorry. I'm just a little tender about the whole thing. Anyway, if you start out of the gate with that type of thing, you know, you're going to turn off your audience right away. So what I do is I start with simple, small things. You know, maybe it, you're going into you know, hurricane season or, you know, winter storm season or something like that. And talk to people about some things that you've been doing. You know, I, you know I'm stocking up. I, I got X number of cases of whatever in case, you know, we lose power or, you know, the roads are difficult to travel on or 
uh, you know, relay a story like, you know, oh, during the last snowstorm, I, you know, we lost power and it was great because I had X and it meant that I didn't have to run out to the store and everything. Sharing little anecdotes like that is a great way of sharing those ideas with other people. You know, you, you probably have mentioned it more than once, not obsessively, but, you know, bring it up a few times, you know, you know what you, you've been doing, what's worked well for you. Uh, and make it be about those simple things that happen all the time. Because one, you're not going to sound like a crazy nut because everyone knows that snowstorms happen all the time. Everyone knows that, you know, hurricanes happen all the time. These are not unusual events at all. Uh, you know, everyone knows that the aliens uh, in drop by the airdrop, the, uh, I, I just can't say it. Uh, everyone knows that that doesn't happen all the time. So, you know, you open with something like that or major financial collapse or meteor impact. You know, even though, those, even though those things can happen, they don't happen that frequently. So people aren't going to think they're going to happen. And also, what's great about things that happen all the time is that if you get people to try out a couple of these things and then that event happens, they are going to have personal, real experience with how that provision, I like to call them provisions instead of preps, you know, when you're talking about with non-preppers, how that provision really made their life better. And that's going to have a, fee, a, a positive feedback and get them into more of that kind of stuff. The other benefit of, uh, you know, starting with those small things is that even if the aliens do invade, okay, let's start over. Even if the aliens do invade by airdropping bird flu infected clown zombies, uh, actually, no, that was only a 90%. I didn't nail that one, but yeah. Anyway, even if that does happen, people are gonna wanna have food. People are gonna wanna have water. So all those very simple preps that are good for very common things, are going to be good for you know the financial collapse because you have food in your house you don't have to drive down to the store and fight through a mob to pay fifty dollars for a grain of rice so all of these kind of very simple things are also super helpful for the major stuff now if the major stuff happens are they going to have everything that they want you know if they have just you know stocked up you know you know, week's worth of food. No, but they're gonna have that week's worth of food. They're gonna have something. And it's gonna put them at the very least in a better position than they would have been if they had done nothing. And if you go at people right out of the gate with the bird flu infected clown zombies being airdropped by aliens, that was backwards, but I nailed that one. If you open out of the gate with that, you're gonna lose people and they're not even gonna take that first step. So if you start small, get them in the door, get them comfortable with the idea, get them to like it when it helps them once, and then you can kind of go from there. That's, that's been my method that's worked with a lot of people that I know and care about. And, uh, you know, if you try it, I'd love to know what your success rate is with, with it as well. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.